And amen, amen. Just quotes for the day I just want to um, just give to you. First, I just want to honor our leaders, yeah. Dr. Caracas Watkins and Audra Watkins. We honor our lady of the house who's not with us, who's celebrating uh, my brother's birthday, so she stayed with him for the weekend, but we do honor her, and we speak blessings over them. I know we've already prayed for them, but we thank God for the work that they're doing, and we thank God just to be a part and just to be connected to something, amen, so that we can continue to flourish and so that we can continue to grow in the things of the Lord, amen. So I'm excited about it. I'm excited about the connection and what we're doing, amen, amen, because we launch leaders, amen, hallelujah, and we being launched, amen, amen, to make a difference and to make impact, amen, amen. Quote, first quote, and um, I just want to say this, we're um, continuing to pray because I know that um, our brother, dear brother, uh, Joseph Teddy Robinson visit us um, sometimes here, and he will always send me, and I heard this over and over again at his home going memorial on yesterday, but he will always send out those Miles Monroe quotes or videos, which he always talking about the kingdom and leadership and success. He's such a wise man of God. And I've even heard my dad like quote, he loved Dr. Miles Monroe, but there are just some quotes that I just want to give you by Dr. Miles Monroe. The first one is, the value of life is not in its duration, but in its donation. You are not important because of how long you live. You are important because of how effective you live. That's awesome. So I want to ask you, how effective are you being? Are you producing anything? Are you giving your donation to make an impact? Because that's what we've been commissioned to do. Amen. Second quote. Love this one. Don't die old. Die empty. That's the goal of life. Ooh, this, this next part is real good. Go to the cemetery and disappoint the graveyard. Go to the cemetery and disappoint the graveyard. Amen. Last one. You weren't born just to live a life and to die. You were born to accomplish something specifically. Matter of fact, Success is making it to the end of your purpose. That is success. Success is not just existing. Success is making it to the end of why you were born. That's real success. Making it to the end of why, why you are born. So are you just existing? Or are you making an impact? That's what I want to propose to you today. I want you to shout impact. I want you to get this today. <laughs> you were born with a purpose. God knew it before you were even born, and he knows the plans that he has for, for your life. He knew that before you were even fashioned and formed in your mother's womb. Now is the time for you to go forth and for you to walk in purpose and be effective and to die empty. What are you sitting on? What is your donation that you're sitting on that you're not giving? Is there something else other than what you're doing? Is there something else God has purposed you to do and you're sitting on your donation and not contributing to the work of God and to the kingdom? I want y'all to ask yourselves this question. Think about it. Is there more that you could be given, more that you could be doing than just coming to church every Sunday? Get in this word. It's more than just coming here, sitting in church every Sunday. But for you to go here, to be, refi to be filled up, refueled, so that you can make an impact, on your neighborhood, on your job, in your household first. <laughs> Making an impact in your household. Are you giving to your all? Are you using your giftings and talents? Who in here got some giftings and talents that you're not giving your don donation to? Real question. You're not giving, don't be ashamed that you're not giving. I wanna, I wanna convict you today. If I can't do that, then go home. <laughs> But I want to just encourage you today. You have to give your donation, whatever you're sitting on, that idea that God has given you, that dream that God has given you, somebody's waiting on it. That ministry that God has given you, somebody is waiting on your donation. And what if they never receive that? Because that person is tied to your life. How many people have been tied to our life, but because of our donation and our impact, we don't give an impact? 
they're not changed. But they're directly assigned to you. But you won't give your donation. Are you walking in your purpose? Are you giving your God-given donations to be a blessing to the kingdom? Or are you sitting on it? I want you to think about those things. So my topic for today is, and we talked about being launched as leaders, and we know that this is the year of impact. Launched to make an impact. We launch leaders, right? Come on, say we launch leaders. We launch leaders to make an impact. I want you to go to, because when I thought about making an impact, and, you know, some people may say, well, mm, I don't really have to do nothing. You know, I, don't, I just want to sit here and not do anything. I just want to receive everything, but I don't want to give nothing. I wanted to go back. I wanted to go back to the beginning, which is in Genesis 26 through 28. Because in the beginning, do you think God just created us for nothing? No purpose? But when I started reading this, I was like, he created me for a purpose. And in the beginning, he created me to make impact. He created me to be creative. He gave me wisdom to create things. And he gave Adam and Eve that. So if you go to Genesis 1, 26 through 28, Starting with verse 26, it says, Then God said, Let us, which is the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost representation of the Trinity, make man in our image, according to our likeness. Not physical, but a spiritual personality and moral likeness. And let them have complete authority over the fish and of the sea. Here we go. You have authority. Therefore, you have authority to go and, 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 and have authority over the fish and over the seas. Right here, you're making an impact right here. That means I just didn't call you to sit here, Adam and Eve, but I called you to have dominion. I called you to have authority. I called you to have something, be, be over something. Amen? The birds of the air, the cattle, and over the entire earth, and over everything that creeps and crawls, on the earth, verse number 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image and likeness of God, he created him. Both male and female, he created them. God blessed them. God has blessed you. Granting them certain authority. You have been granted authority. And he said to them, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. That means putting it under your power. Be fruitful, multiply. Well, a lot of people hear about fruitful, they just think about having babies, but God has commissioned you to be fruitful in everything that you put your hands to in your personal life. Of course, we ought to be fruitful, and we ought to have kids, amen, and we ought to have those um, arrows that we have, but also, he has put some things into our hands for us to be fruitful. What is it that you're putting your hands to that, that, you, uh, that God is multiplying, that you are fruitful in? Everything that you, God has given you, every purpose, every, every job, ever create a thing God has caused you to be fruitful and to multiply and fill the earth putting it under your power and rule over that means to dominate the fish of the sea the birds of the air and every living thing that moves upon the earth he didn't summon the plants he didn't summon the animals to make a difference and to make impact he didn't summon the earth to make an impact he commanded man to have impact authority and to rule he commanded you to do that let's let's go and, and give the definition of impact of course we know what impact is, but sometimes you have to dissect a word in order to get a better understanding um, impact is to have a strong effect on someone or something and I was thinking about impact, um, I was thinking about the people that are impactful. Not only are you to be an impact on others' lives, but I am grateful for the people that has, has impacted my life. Yeah, yeah. Think about the people that has impacted your life. One sits in here right now, which is my Auntie Kathy Brown. She just don't know. She didn't want me to call her name out. But I am going to thank God for the impact that she had on my life, not only being my aunt, but also being my youth pastor. And 
I didn't always get it right. I didn't always act right. But today, I am the woman of God that I am because of the impact that you and my uncle made in my life. And for that, I'm grateful. So I, I have no choice but to make an impact on somebody else's life because somebody made an impact on my life. My father, my mother, Dr. Watkins, all of these great people, my mentors, they've made a, a great impact on my life, and I am the woman of God that I am because of those great people. And I want to be impactful in somebody else's life, right? Yeah. I have a right to give that back what somebody has given me. You got to give that back. How many have somebody that has impacted their life? Well, you got to go and impact somebody else's life. Amen. Amen. And it is to have a strong effect on someone or something to affect, to influence, make an impression, to modify. My life has been modified because of the impactful people that have been in my life. To transform, to shape, to control, to govern, to determine, to decide, and to sway. I want to sway someone to know the Christ that I know so that it can change their life. Amen. We are being launched to make a difference, to make an impact, to set some things in motion for the kingdom, right? To bring about success into our lives, into our business, into our jobs, into our homes, and et cetera, and so forth. We are being launched to introduce some new things, to establish some things. Amen. Uh, those things that God has given you, he wants you to shape it. He wants you to establish it. Just like he gave Adam. Adam and Eve, hey, I'm giving you these things. Hey, learn how to cultivate it, amen. You got the land, you got the earth. Come on, I'm going to give you the wisdom and the knowledge to cultivate these things. He's caused them to make an impact, and he's called us to make an impact. We are being launched to introduce new things, establish some things uh, for the greater good, to cause others to know Christ, and to also be kings and priests. I don't know if you was in... Um, at the Gaylord, and Dr. Um, Apostle Brown, Theron Brown, he talked about being priests and kings. I don't think nobody could have broke that down like he broke it down, but I want to be a, a priest in the spirit realm, and I want to be a king in the natural, amen? <laughs> that thing was so good, and he broke that down so good, and there's a balance between the two. It's a balance between the spiritual and the natural life, right? Right, and I want to be impactful and spiritually, and I want to be impactful naturally to rule, to have dominion, to take authority. As we live as both priests and king we are to make an impact so let's get back to Eden so we can live on top of the world are you living on top of the world we can't live below the world he said we're gonna live on top of the world so that we can be impactful so that we can make a difference right yeah. have major impact we should have maximum lasting impact, maximizing our potential while displaying the image of God, being a high impact expression of him on the earth. What are you expressing on the earth? What kind of expression are you on the earth? All right, launched. What is it to be launched? First definition is set a boat in motion by pushing it or allowing it to roll into the water. And I'm going to just tell some of you, and I've I seen this, my dear brother, uh, Brother Nama, uh, I think it's Nama Navendra Woods, we were all snuck in the snow a couple of weeks ago up in Huntsville. <laughs> and he got a revelation. I said, that is so good. He was saying, you know, they could have sat in the car all night, but it wasn't until they got out of the boat that they found favor, that God began to do things for them. God got them a ride home some kind of way. But he said, first I had to get out of the boat. I could have chose to stay in the boat and was like, man, I'm just stuck here. But he said, because I got out of the boat, that's when God starts to move some things in motion for me because I choose to not have fear and get out of the boat, get out of the car, and then God began to do some things. So I'm asking you today, go on and slide out of the boat. Go ahead and slide out of the car car go ahead and slide out of your comfort zone because God has caused you to make an impact amen wow. 
and allow the water to roll you. And then you'll find favor and God will begin to do some things in your life and you'll begin to make impact. But if you stay in the boat and if you stay in the car and if you stay in complacement and if you stay in what you're familiar with, you'll never be able to roll into the deep. You are not born to be dormant. You are born to be lunched out. Amen. To set into motion what lunch is, to start, to begin. Today is a starting place, a beginning place for those who are not walking in your purpose and those of you who are not giving your donation. Today you can start again. Today you can set some things in motion. Go home and write some things down what the Lord has given you and start to set those things into motion. Go ahead and chart your path and put it on paper. Say, make the vision, write it down, make it plain, and go ahead and start seeing what I need to do to get these things set in motion because I have something to give. I have a donation to give so that I can be an impact in the kingdom of God. Amen to put into place, to initiate, to set up, to bring out, to organize some things, introduce, open, establish, originate, create, to pioneer some things. And I was thinking about a rocket when I think about launched. In order for a rocket to be launched, first force has to be applied in order to move. I'm going to apply some pressure and some, uh, some pressure and some force to you today so that you can be launched out. That, that's my whole assignment today is to apply some pressure to you so that you can launch out. Amen. I'm going to have to set a blaze what's lying dormant on the inside of you. I'm going to have to set a blaze because you are born to make an impact, right? Don't you feel like you ain't born to make an impact? Because when God made you, he said, I made you fearfully and wonderfully. So you're going to do some fearfully and wonderfully things. That's what he has called you to do, right? So don't think that you're inadequate and that you don't have enough and that you are not enough and you didn't mess up and I don't have anything, I don't have any giftings, I can't do anything. God has called you to do something. It may not be what God has called me to be, but you are just as important and, and significant as me. The whole body of Christ, everything, everything is important from your head to your hair to every follicle in your hair to your nose, to everything, to your chin, to your shoulders. Everything is important. All the way down to your pinky toe, they all are important. We all are important, a part of the body of Christ, and it's time to set you forth in motion. Amen. Amen. So in order for a rocket to be launched, first as to be applied in order to move them, in order for it to thrust, that means that pressure and force accelerates the gas one way and the rocket the other way. The thrust for the rocket continues as long as its engines are firing. As long as your engines are firing, you want to be launched out. Keep them engines firing. Keep those rockets on fire. Keep those rockets ablaze. And I'm going to keep on pushing you. I'm going to keep on setting it ablaze too. I'm going to keep on applying pressure until you be launched into the woman or the man of God that God has called you to be. Because we got to go out here and make an impact. I don't care what the church looks like now, but we as the church, we as the body of Christ, we are called to make a difference, right? Amen. I don't care what it looks like now. God said he's coming back for a church without spot, blemish, or wrinkle. And I dare to believe that. And I dare, I don't care how it looks, the, the church look like uh, a, a mess right now. People don't even want to be a part of it. But I declare that the church will look like what God has called it to be. And he's going to launch us out to make a difference. If you believe that, clap your hands. Amen. Mark 16 and 15 says, go into the world and preach the gospel to all creation. All creation. And as I think about every facet of, of technology that we have right now, man, we can go out to all the nation and preach the gospel. It's hitting every country. We have people logging in from London. Actually, I had someone, um, Pastor Ali, he had called me on Facebook Messenger one day. And I'm thinking, y'all, to get a word, he didn't even have to write a letter. He just called me on Facebook Messenger, and he had a whole word for me for 2023. Wow. And he just didn't even know that, that that day I was at home by myself bringing in the new year. Y'all, I have never been by myself for the new year. Let me just tell you that. I have never been without child, without anything. Y'all, on, this is New Year's Eve, and I'm thinking, 
what in the world is this? Why am I by myself? And for a minute, I was a little sad. I was like, <laughs> you know, what am I going to do with myself, you know? And you know what? Like God said, just begin to get in here and write. It felt good. If y'all can remember New Year's Eve, it was a pretty day. I opened up my windows in my apartment, and I got out my pins and my court board, and I had bought a new court board and uh, another little dry erase board that I was going to hang in my room because I, I write down my visions um, for the year and, and what God has called me to, my word and my prayers, and I opened up my prayer journal. I hadn't opened up my prayer journal in a while because there's some um, goals that I set in place and I was just trying to see sometimes I go a long time when I'm looking at my goals just to see like when I go back to it I'm like ooh, God did that and God did that and God did that and God did that and I was like ooh, he ain't slack concerning his promises you know and he's doing that that's what I'm saying write those things down but in my time you know God just said I want you in this place by yourself just to enjoy me and he began to come for me and it felt so good and I was like God, you'll never leave me nor forsake me. And it was that feeling of, I'm right here. Wow. Like, I need you and me today. Just you and me, just to commune with me, just to have that time with me. And as the little breeze was coming in my window, I just felt God, you know? I just like, sometimes you can get in a place and get in a funk when you think that you alone and by yourself. But when God come in, you just allow him to come in and just comfort you. And, and you just know that he's there. And, and I was just writing and reading and reading my word and started on a new book and everything. I'm like, man, this is awesome. This is going to be a great year. This is going to be a great year. I'm declaring it's going to be a great year. Y'all better get that. It's going to be a great year. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but it says go into, the, um, and go into the world and preach the gospel to all of creation. Some may think, preach? Ugh, what? Because when y'all think about preaching, y'all think about this right here. I do my best preaching when I'm out and about. I don't need this. I don't need a computer. I don't need my Bible. I don't, because you're a walking epistle, right? Right, right. right. <laughs> and if you have that word in your heart, it'll come out like, it'll come out whenever you meet somebody. I, I, I take, I preach the gospel. They don't even know it. I preach the gospel when I'm interviewing people because I'm a recruiter. When I'm interviewing people, I have a word for them. You know, I encourage them if they're going through. I don't know why sometimes he brings people to me and they just be going through. I don't care. Sometimes I'll be like, I'll see them and, you know, I don't, I don't try to condemn them. I don't try to judge them. Some of them may come in, look like they've been smoking weed, and I just be like, you know what? You better go clean your system out. You know, I believe God has great things for your life, but you need to go clean your system out. You'll never get a job if you don't start thinking, you know, about yourself and say, I'm never going to be anything. I'm never going to have anything great if I don't abide by these laws. And you got to cut that out, you know, get your vape or something. But you need to come on out them, uh, that week so you can get a job, you know? Like, these are, and I'm being real with them, you know, like, if you have to move to a vape for a minute, and you know, until God deliver you from whatever you need to be delivered from. But in order to get you a good job, you got a degree. You know, this is what I'm saying. Man, you got a degree. God has great things for your life. You can do great things. Quick testimony. I had a guy who came in, and um, he was concerned about his, uh, I had to do a background check. He was concerned about his background check. And I was like, well, you know, let's just run it. Let's just see your heaven. He was like, I'm going to go home and pray tonight then because I don't know. <laughs> I said, well, go home and pray and believe in God with you. You know, go home and pray about it. You know, God can do the impossible, right? <laughs> so he was like, yeah, he can. I ain't even do it, though. You know what I'm saying? I, ain't, I, I was just I, in, in the moment, and I was just with the wrong people. I was like, okay, I hear you. Let's just run the background check. It usually be about one or two days to do your background check, and then I'll let you know how your results come. So the, the next day, got the background check clean, y'all. Background check clean. So I said, I'm going to get him now. This is, this is how I'm, like, making an impact on others. So he came in. I said, did you, did you pray last night? He was like, man, no, I forgot to pray. I said, I can tell because I was going to play with him. I can tell you didn't. I said, let's walk back out to the car. He was like, oh, man, what? <laughs> So let's walk on back. I said, get your stuff, let's walk on out to the car. I'm just playing with him. He was like, man, I knew it, I knew it. I was like, you didn't even pray, right? I said, but the good thing about God, even when we don't do what we're supposed to do, uh -huh. he'll still show us favor. 
because guess what? Your background clear. Your, he grabbed me and he was like, huh? like for real, like what? Man, that's a miracle. I'm like, yes, but that's the impact that I want to make, right? So every time that he see me, he try to come up there for anything. I need, to, I need to do this. I come up to the office and do this. I do that. Because I made an impact on his life. And it wasn't just me. I showed God, God can do all things. Like, if you just trust them, you know, you know, I don't condemn them. I don't judge them. You know, God still has great plans for your life. I don't care what it is. Go take care of what you need to take care of. Make sure you don't ever show up on your record ever again. And let's move forward in the things of Christ. So has God called you to preach the God? Gospel, I preach the gospel without even giving a scripture, opening up my Bible, having a platform, but God came in in a great way. Yeah. And I'm praying now that he even changed, he come and just changed his life. I pray that he remember, he's going to remember that moment for the rest of his life. If I never see him again, he's going to remember that moment. What have you done in someone's life or made an impact that they'll never forget? If you die today, what will people remember you for? That you were messy, that you kept up mess? That you weren't friendly, that you didn't show yourself friendly to them? That you was a mean person? An unforgiving person? One that held grudges? Or would they know you for being an impactful person? Another quick testimony, um, I was, um, I'm a part of my brother's business and we have a contract at a church and they found out who my daddy was. Uh -oh. Sometimes you think you can just get away from stuff and people don't like, I had no idea because I don't know these people. And so she was like, when she found out who my daddy was, she was like, girl, do I know your daddy? Girl, he has made such an impact on my life. You just don't know, I just can't believe it. I'm in the presence of Foster Wright's daughter. And I'm like, oh my God, like, and so her husband came one day, and she was like, let me go get my husband. And then she went and got her husband. She was like, look at this girl. Tell me where you know her from. I'm thinking, I don't know y'all. You don't know me. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> so he's like looking like, mm, she look familiar. He was like, guess who daughter that is? And he was like, um, I can't think. He was like, Apostle Wright, y'all. His mouth dropped like this for like two minutes. And it wasn't me, that's the impact that he left and made on people's life. Although he's not present, just to be in the presence of someone that's attached to him because he has made such an impact on our life, his mouth like dropped like, I can't believe it. Yes, we know him. Like he's such an amazing person. He's such a you just don't know how he's changed my life. God has uh, like allowed him to touch so many people's lives. But that's the impact that we want to make. Even when we're gone, we are making impact and people remember us. Right? We want to make a lifetime impact on people. Amen. Let's make a lifetime impact. Matthew 5, 13 through 16. Let's go there. It says, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lo lost its taste, that's its purpose, that's its impact, how can it be made salty again? Have you ever thought of salt losing its flavor? Do y'all think salt can lose its flavor? Think about it. Can salt lose its flavor? Mm, I had to look that thing up. I was like, how can... Salt lose its taste. Like, I ain't never thought salt got older. Is there an expiration date on salt? Come on, you cookers, tell me, because I just, you, I just pour it on there, you know? I don't know if there's an expiration date on the salt, or how, if, if, if salt ever loses flavor. But back in the day, when they began to get salt, sometimes the salt would be so full of impurities and so full of dirt that it could not be separated or used. And what they would do, they would throw that dirt just on the road, side of the road because it was of no use because there were so many impurities in the salt which would cause the salt to lose its 
flavor or not to be effective as it should be because of the impurities. So we can't allow impurities to cause us yeah. to lose our flavor. can't do nothing with it, just throw it by the wayside. Throw it to the door. You, you, you ain't worth being an impact. You, you can't be an impact because you're full of impurities. You're full of the wrong things. You can't be an impact. But I want to remind you, you are the salt of the earth. Amen. You are the salt of the earth. It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out or walked on by people when the walkways are wet and slippery. And I'm reading from the Amplifier. Y'all know Amplifier put in a few more other words. <laughs> you are the light. 14 says, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill which cannot be hidden. Let me say that again. You are the light of the world. A city that sits on a hill which cannot be hidden. You cannot be hidden. You are the light of the world. God has called you to be the light of the world. You are a city. Sit yourself up on that hill and you shine bright. Come on, come on, come on now. That's what we've been called and commissioned to do. A city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Gives light to all who are in the house. Gives light to all who's on your job. Gives light to all. When you're in Walmart and somebody cuss you out of the cashier, she got an attitude. Who gives light to all? When you through in that drive-thru and the customer service is bad as I don't know what, but gives light to all <laughs> who are in the house. Give light to your children who is in the house, not cussing them out. Giving light to them. Giving them a word, setting the example, being an impact. Let your light, 16 says, let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good deeds, your donations, your purpose, your giftings, your business, that they may see in such a way that your good deeds and moral excellence and recognize and honor and glorify your Father who is in heaven. It's all for the glory of God. Yeah. Everything that you do, you are to honor God and give him glory. Every donation that you give, you are to honor God and give him glory. And even when you begin to be prosperous and be successful, you are to honor God and give him glory because it's because of you, oh God, that you're causing me to be successful, that you're giving me this platform, that you're causing me to do great things, that you're causing things to excel in my life. God, and I give you glory, and I'm going to give back unto you, right? To be a greater blessing to the kingdom. I can't wait till one day I can be such a blessing to the kingdom because I love people. I love helping people. I love like when you're in time of need, that is me. I am a sucker because somebody can actually get over on me like real quick. And sometimes I have to say, okay, God, I have to have some discernment with this. So I put anybody in my car, I'll do anything, but now I'm just having to be wise in those things. You know, say, <laughs> God, if I ain't feeling this, I'm like, I got to really be led now, but I just love giving to people. I've always been like that. I've always been like just a people's person, but I just love giving back unto God. And it's to glorify God. And I want to give you this last scripture in Isaiah 60, 1 through 3, which says, Arise from your spiritual depression to a new life. Shine, that means to be radiant with the glory and brilliance of the Lord, for your light has come. And the glory and brilliance of the Lord has risen upon you. 
For in fact, darkness will cover the earth and deep darkness will cover the people. And we're seeing deep darkness that's covering the earth and that's covering the people. But the Lord will rise upon you and his glory and brilliance will be seen on you and you shall make an impact. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. People are going to come to your light and going to come to the brightness of of your rising. So I'm telling you to rise up. Now is the time to live intentionally to make an impact. The harvest is right by here. The opportunity is great. And the platform is big and broad. I had a word spoken over me and, and um, it was Apostle Jana Alcorn and she was like, I watched one of your videos one day. And she said, I looked at one of your videos, and I was thinking, I trust this girl with my life. Wow. She just said, I just hear trust in your voice. Like, I, I can listen to you. And she was like, even if, you know, in your sweet voice and everything, she was just like, I'm drawn to your voice. Like, I will listen. It's comforting to hear you. You're such a good encourager. People are going to like that. She said, you got to utilize social media because there are so many people that need to hear what you're saying. And as uncomfortable as I am, I like, I start doing it here and there. But it's like a place that I'm like very uncomfortable in. Like, I don't like to do it. So now like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to press forward and do some things because I know that my platform is just not here in the pulpit. There are so many people's lives that God wants to touch, touch through me. He's going to use me as the instrument to touch them, right? So I want to, and I'm, th I'm saying, God, okay, if you call me to this, then you're going to allow me. You're going to give me the resources. You're going to help me. You're going to help me to overcome my fear. You're going to give me confidence when I'm doing it because if it's some people that I need to touch, whomever they may be, God, you giving me the platform. Man, TikTok, I know y'all like it, but for some things, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, all of that stuff, we may not want to use them, but that's how we're going to reach the nation. And I'm saying, God, give me the grace. God, if that's how you want me to make an impact, help me. Help me. God, you're going to cause me to, you're going to show me. He is. He's going to show me how to do that and to effectively do that. So making an impact is having excellence. Also, making an impact is having excellence in all that you do. Having excellence in all that you do. Doing the right thing when no one is even looking. People are looking at your life. You're making an impact just by people looking at you. Seeing how you handle things, seeing how you handle situations. I had someone to call me, she was like, I know you don't know this, but I know some of the stuff you go through just by hearing folks talking. You know, I just, I just watch what you go through in your life and stuff. I know you've been divorced, I know you lost a child, I know you all this, and all that. I just been watching you. She said, hey, you ain't never came to Facebook or uh, said anything on social media. Every time I see you, you're always the same, you're always loving, you're always smiling probably hurting on the inside, and it was like, I just never seen you give a reaction. And I just want to thank you for that. It just, it just calls me, you know, like everything don't need a reaction. You ain't never had to come address anything. You know what? God be fighting for me on the other end of it. Like, I don't have to. Because God gonna take care of that or, whom, or whatever situation. He ain't never lost a battle. That's what the song said. You know, I just gotta trust him and I ain't gotta prove nothing to nobody. I ain't gotta uncover you, I cover you, and go wrong doing or whatever may happen. I don't have to speak on it. But that's the impact that I make because I don't speak on those things. But I do want you to watch and see how God still use me. How God still calls me to love you. How God still calls me to be the same even when I see you. That's the impact that I'm telling you that we got to make. Although they looking for me, like after like, she looking for me to have a reaction, I guess. I guess she just waiting on me to have, I just can't believe you done been through all this stuff and you ain't saying nothing. You don't say anything. But the streets be talking. But God be talking through my reaction and my impact, you know, right? Through my impact. And that's what we want to do. Making an impact is, means being a servant first. Making impact is being kind to others in spite of them being kind, un, not kind to you. That's what making an impact is. To influence, to have an effect on the character development, behavior of someone or something or the effect of itself. 
So uh, what I want you to do, I want you these acronyms of impact is you, for you to make influence, to be an influence, to have an influence on the character, development, and behavior of someone or something or the effect of itself. Be an influence, influence others. Motivation, be motivated to make a difference. Get out of the boat and be launched into your destiny. You can't be impactful by lying dormant. I hope I've motivated you today, right? Purpose, find your purpose and walk in it. God already knows the plans that he have for you and he's gonna prosper you in those plans, give you a good future, keep you from evil. So go ahead and walk in the purposes and plans uh, that God has for your life, right? Action, move into action. You've heard this, so what action are you gonna take? Quit just hearing things and not taking it and putting it into action when you leave here. Put into, as soon as you leave here, put into action. Write down some things that you do well, what I can be impactful in, what I can do a better job in, well, how can I be impactful in this situation, how can I make an impact. Write those things down. Start moving as soon as you leave out of here. Move, take action. A lot of things, we don't get what we want because we don't move, we don't take action. We just get it and then we just don't do anything with it. But we got to do something with the word of God that we're given. It's enough of us shouting and coming in here and doing all that. No, 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 no. So let's sit down and be instructed so that we can go out and make an impact. Yeah. Right? Then we can shout, baby, after that. When we, when we see impact being made and we're taking action, then that's when we can really shout and we can really be grateful. A community, find ways to make an impact. See, just community. Find ways to make an impact in your community. What can I do? How can you make an impact? Well, my family, and hopefully they're they ready to turn their donations in. I asked them for Christmas, let's make hats and scarves because Huntsville has a lot of homeless people. Lots of, so, because they're very good. <laughs> Not me, I didn't ask me, I asked them. <laughs> to crochet some hats and scarves. And let's give them out. But that's their donation. Your donation don't have to be you preaching. That's your donation. That's what you're good at. They're good at crocheting. I'm not. I may miss a few stitches. Mine ain't going to look like this. I really don't even have time. So I guess they probably think I'd be making excuses. But they do a real good job. And I'll pass them out for them. But that's their donation. <laughs> so find ways to be an impact in your community. You are the church. We are to go out and to make impact. What can I do? What can I contribute? What, what, is, what is it that I can do? You guys that have businesses, what is it that you can do to make an impact in your community? What can I do? What is it? Last is trust. Trust that God has you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The greater one lives on the inside of you. Amen. He's going to do great things in your life if you'll allow him to. Don't just be existing and not producing, not making a difference. Don't just be existing and, and not being an impact, but be a blessing to others and to the kingdom and walk in good success. Be that high impact expression that God has called you to be. Be the impact that God has called you to be. Go ahead and be launched out into the deep. Go ahead and get out of that boat, get out of that car, whatever else it is that God want to do in your life. Don't be afraid. God got you. Trust him. Trust the process. Trust the plan. And come on, let's make an impact in 2023. Amen. Amen.